In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Welcome to all of you, especially the visitors who are here with us, and also those who are uh, celebrating with us through the live stream today. God is building his house in eastern Oklahoma. Every ordination, every wedding, every mass of consecration sees God building his house in eastern Oklahoma. So today is a great day of celebration for us as a diocese and for our church as we add two men to the ranks of priests in this diocese. To prepare us to enter the celebration, let us first call to mind our own sins and ask God for his healing and mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to these deacons of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by their ministry and life they may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak, I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have this ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. Rather, we have renounced shameful, hidden things, not acting deceitfully or falsifying the word of God, but by the open declaration of the truth. We commend commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God, for we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God, and not from and not from us the word of the lord
Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Jonathan Patrick Fincher. Robert Michael Healy. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asked you to ordain these, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Father Pratt, do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the re recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of priesthood. Thanks be to God.
Think of a country in crisis. Form the image of it in your mind. Rumors carry as much weight as the official organ of news. Divisions and factions among the population weaken a united national identity. Many political leaders worry more about their own future than what is good for their people. Even many religious leaders have lost the trust of the people. And all the while, surrounding nations celebrate the resulting chaos and threaten the country. Perhaps it sounds familiar. This was Judah in the beginning of the 6th century B.C., before Christ, when God called a young man named Jeremiah to be his prophet. Jeremiah was an honest and insightful young man, and so he recognized his inability to do what God asked of him, and so he said, to God, I am too young to speak. God said, in effect, to Jeremiah, yes, you are, but go anyway. Do what I ask you to do, and I will speak in you. This past week, we celebrated the solemnity of the birth of John the Baptist, the last of the great line of prophets to which Jeremiah also belonged. John introduced at long last the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And today we celebrate with John and Robert the ongoing work of Jesus Christ through his priesthood, the priesthood that he himself established in his church. Jesus is the teacher, the priest and the shepherd of the human race. And he gives a share of that office to his bishops and the priests who are their co-workers. No man can take up this office on his own, but he does so in response to a call from the Lord. John and Robert, if you are attentive, you will recognize your own inability to fulfill the call you have received. With Jeremiah, you will say, I know not how to speak. I am too young. In fact, I don't think either of you has reached 30 yet, have you? But also with Jeremiah, you will trust that Jesus will teach you and sanctify through you and lead the people by your ministry if you will let him. As a teacher, you will address the question, who is God? God is love. You will address the question, who are we, all of us? We are the beloved of God, made brothers and sisters of one another and heirs to the life of grace. Think how much more peace and joy would exist in our nation if we, all of us, every person, would take to heart that fact that we are brothers and sisters of each other, that we are called to heaven together. Finally, you will address the question, how do we tell others? We tell others by living the faith we believed. We tell others by believing that Jesus Christ is the answer to the deepest longing of every human heart. As priests, you will sanctify God's holy people through the sacraments. 
In a particular way, the sacraments of reconciliation and Eucharist will keep hope alive in the hearts of the people and give them strength for the journey of the Christian life. The sacraments themselves will also serve as a reminder to you that we are not our own, but we are priests of Jesus Christ, and it is he who works through us. Finally, as shepherds, you will take your place keeping watch over the Lord's flock. If being a shepherd were merely a matter of reciting chapter and verse, we would not need you. We would just send everyone a Bible and a catechism, or maybe a YouTube video, or, or a link, or a Zoom invitation or something. But we do need you. The grace of the shepherd comes from three things. His humility, which is based in his awareness of his own sins and weakness. Someone asked Pope Francis what people should know about him, and he said, after a moment of thought, that I am a sinner in need of God's grace. And he's our chief shepherd. Out of that humility, your love for and your living closely with the people of God will be the second <clears throat> part of this grace of the shepherd, keeping an eye on the signs of the times for what harms them or threatens them today. The third part of the grace of the shepherd, the art of pastoral ministry is how to coax and attract people to the life of faith. This grace comes from your own life of prayer and intimacy with Jesus as you constantly ask him how to do what he is calling you to do each day. Beyond these three things, teaching, sanctifying and leading God's people, there's just a lot of meetings and email. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. That's the way it goes. But in the midst of these three things, you will find the most amazing life, the rich and deep well of a celibate commitment and the fidelity of God who will fulfill each day the call that he has placed in you. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people. 
Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. <clears throat> do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Let us kneel. Pray. 
Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you everything progresses. Through you all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ your Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites, when you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is apostle and high priest of our confession, through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles, consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office, which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, May they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do. Imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Peace be with you. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Peace be with you.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, Grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the Word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim.
therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and praying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, <clears throat> which, <clears throat> which we make to you and also for these your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. <clears throat> to us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, mm. graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. As we prepare to receive Holy Communion, we invite you to stay in your place until you are dismissed by the ushers in order for us to maintain social distancing uh, during re the reception of Holy Communion. If you are sitting on the north side or the south side against the walls, again, please wait until you're dismissed. You will go down the aisle to the back, up the center aisle, and back to your seats in order for us to keep the communion lines going in the same direction. Thank you.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that, united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. My name is Father Michael Pratt. I'm the Director of Vocations for the Diocese of Tulsa. I've had the privilege of working with these two fine men for the last few years. That being said, they're now your problem. <laughs> the two priests will be offering their first blessings immediately following Mass. Father Healy will be in the St. Joseph altar on this side of the church. If the line could form on this north aisle and go down, go around the pews and into the altar for his first blessings. Father Fincher will be on the, at the Marian altar on this side of the church. And same thing, if the line could form down that south aisle, go around the pews and into the altar. Again, those blessings will be offered immediately following Mass. Both priests will be offering Mass for the very first time tomorrow. Father Healy will be saying the 10 a.m. Mass right here at Holy Family Cathedral. Again, that's 10 a.m. right here. He will be offering confessions at 9 a.m. right here. Father Fincher's first Mass will be at 5 p.m. at the Church of St. Pius tomorrow evening, and he will be offering confessions at 4 p.m. Thank you very much. Now that the two men have been ordained as priests, it means we have room for at least two more seminarians. I'm not kidding, we do, we have. <laughs> so you young men who are here with us this evening or watching on the live stream, please consider that possibility that God is calling you in a most unlikely way. And if you think that he is, respond generously as these young men have. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation. Amen. And may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And now I'll invite Father John and Father Robert to offer their first priestly blessing to all of those gathered here. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen.